Hi everyone, welcome to the next video in our plant identification series. Uh, the, these videos that we put together are really aimed to give you a basic understanding of the characters that you must look for when you're identifying a plant family. Uh, so today's plant family is the Proteaceae family, which is one of the really important families in the Fynbos biome. So let's look at the overview of the family. Um, they divided into two subfamilies, namely the Proteoid and the Grevilleoid. Um, there are 60 genera and 1,400 species that occur worldwide. Um, they spread over three continents in South America, Africa and Australia, with Australia being the most diverse. Uh, in South Africa, we have 14 genera and about 360 species that occur in South Africa. Only um, four of these 14 genera are represented outside the capillaristic region and more than 330 of the, of the species of the Proteaceae family um, in South Africa is endemic to the CFR, which means they only occur in the capillaristic region. So what are the diagnostic characters of the Proteaceae family? So uh, Proteus have many individual flowers that are clustered on a receptacle uh, surrounded by involucral bracts. So, and these involucral bracts can either be quite conspicuous, like in the Protea genus, or they can be very inconspicuous, like in the Leucospermum genus. We will have a look at these flower types a little bit later on. Uh, there are no sepals and petals present. So if you watch the previous video, we explained what is sepals and petals. Um, Proteaceae have a single set of four segments of tepals, which make up the perianth. Now the perianth is a collective term for all the outer structures of a flower that surround the male and female plants. So the reason why these terminologies are important is that when you look into the literature and books, they make reference to the length of the perianth um, or the hairiness and so you have to understand what the perianth actually means. Um, they have a superior ovary and they have the presence of pollen presenters which is a swollen region at the top of the style. Okay, so if we stick on a photo of just a normal flower, um, you can see the outer structure is the sepal and the petal and together those two structures are called the perianth um, and then you have the stamens which is the male part of the flower and the female part of the flower which is the stigma style and the ovary. So if we go to a proteaceae flower um, it looks quite different. So this is an individual flower um, so they are subtended by a floral back at the base of the flower then you have the perianth segments, the tepals, um, and the perianth segments are divided into three parts. So you have the bottom part is the perianth tube, and then you have the perianth claw, and the very top of the perianth is the perianth limb. And the anthers, which is the male part of the flower, are actually fused into the perianth. Um, so they basically on the top of the, of the perianth segment. And then you have your ovary, style, um, the pollen presenter, and the stigma. So this is an individual flower, uh, individual protea flower, but we know that protea flowers are clustered either into a capitulum, like in uh, protea and leucospermum, where you have a common receptacle uh, where all the flowers are attached to. And this receptacle can either be cylindrical, like here in the uh, example of leucospermum, or they can be flat, like in proteas. Uh, so you have your, your involucral bract, which is at the base of the flower head. Then the floral, then the floral bract is basically at the base of the actual flower, the individual flowers. Then you have your perianth, um, which is... Um, which is sometimes fused together, um, then the style and the pollen presenter. And then in some of the genera of Proteaceae, you have a compound uh, Protea flower head. Um, and compound flower heads are basically 
um, individual flowers that are clustered together in little headlets and then the headlets are clustered together to form a, a flower head. Um, so in this example you can see again the floral bract um, subtends the actual flower. Um, you have the involucral bract that is, it has, uh, is at the base of the flower heads itself. Then you have the headlet stalk um, and then the individual clusters of flowers. Um, which is the perian segments and then the, the, the style and the stigma and the ovary. Okay, so now we are going to look at dissecting some of the flowers. So yeah, I have a protea flower head uh, and you can see I've just cut them in half. Um, so these are the involucral bracts um, and in protea you can see they're very conspicuous and they're brightly colored. Um, and then this is the inside of the flower. So you can see this is the receptacle where all the individual flowers are attached to. Um, and as you can see here, there are numerous individual flowers um, that are clustered on this receptacle base. And then I have dissected out one individual flower. Uh, so here you can see, um, the perianth, so this is the, the perianth, um, and then you have the, the anthers are fused inside the perianth limb, um, and then you have the style and the stigma and the pollen presenter, and then the ovary at the base. Okay, so just for illustration purposes, I've just zoomed into the actual flower. Um, so let's just go over this again. Um, yeah, you have your perianth limbs. Um, the anther are fused into the into the perianth. Uh, then you have the style, the ovary, the style, and the stigma of the pollen presenter. Okay, so here we have a leucospermum, uh, and in this example. Uh, you can see that the involucral bracts are now very inconspicuous and what actually takes the display function are the, are the styles and the stigma, uh, are the stigmas actually. Um, so, and, and they still have a, a common receptacle. So in this example you can see it's a cylindrical receptacle and then the individual flowers are attached to that cylindrical receptacle. Then I've dissected out some flowers here, over here. Um, so there is the perianth. Uh, and I'm just going to zoom in for a moment into the, into the perianth. So here you can see the perianth, um, uh, the perianth segments. And inside are the actual anthers um, that are fused inside the perianth segments. Um, and then you have your, and, and in leucospermum you can actually see these, these pollen presenters very clearly. So you can see that that's swollen, but just below the stigma. So that's the pollen presenter. Then you have your style um, and the ovary obviously not fertilized yet. Um, and that's just one individual flower um, that you can see all the parts. And that there is the floral bract. Okay, so one of the things that's really special about the Proteaceae family, well, at least to me, is that you have this incredible diversity of forms um, in one particular family. So here we're looking at three more genera. Uh, this is Leucodendron, or the cone bushes. And Leucodendrons have separate male and female plants. Um, so this here is a male flower head. Um, and in the male flowers, they only have the male flowers um, and the female parts of the flowers are missing. Then you have the female part. I'm not going to dissect this because as you can see, it's really, it's really, those flowers are really tiny. Um, so, um, so I'm not really going to dissect those because you won't be able to see any detail. Um, but the female plants have the cones and these cones are actually made up of the floral bracts. So
So these individual woody bits here are actually the floral bracts that sit at the base of the flower. Um, and those floral bracts um, become hard and woody like this and they um, protect and store the seeds. Um, so that's leucodendron. Then we have paranomus, uh, which is one of the, the minor genera in, in Proteaceae. Um, and so this is a good example of a compound proteoflower head. So you have a stalk with headlets um, clustered together and those headlets are all, um, and then there's several headlets that make up the, um, the, the entire flower head. Um, and then there's just an individual flower that is separated out. So I'm just going to zoom in um, so you can see. Um, so those are separate um, flowers uh, that has been separated out. And there you can see an example of the perianth and the, the ovary, the style, pollen and stigma. And you can see they still have the same structure, although they look completely different. So this doesn't look anything like a, like a protea, um, but you can see the floral structures are the same. And then this is another genus. Uh, this is Ceruria, uh, and it's also one of the, the smaller genera in, um, in the Proteaceae family. Um, and some of them have compound flower heads. Um, um, well, at, at least most of them have compound flower heads. Um, and then you can see another example. So all these little headlets clustered together. Um, and they are the individual flowers, the perianth, the female part, the ovary, the style, and the stigma and pollen presenter. 